All right, we're on. We're on live here, and y'all good here? All right. Recording in progress. All right, let me turn it down. It's showtime, y'all. Today is Sunday, uh, February 6, 2022. <clears throat> Today's topic, co-creating, attracting, and manifesting your dream teams. Or if that's too big for people, you can just say your best groups. But if you can't do it alone, you might as well have a dream team. A question, here's a question that tests your current knowledge of team building. Okay, here's a question that tests your current knowledge of team building. And it's a serious question. When you first wanted to learn how to drive, read, and uh, write, what did you watch and learn from other drivers and teachers? When you first wanted to learn how to drive, read, write, what did you watch and learn from other drivers and teachers? Or did you magically just get it? Did you just did you just know how to drive, read, and write upon birth? <laughs> Probably not, right? So next question. What have you learned from uh, the top five, or we'll just say your top five um, team builders? What have you learned from your or the top five team builders? Or what have you learned from the best business cultures that earn the kind of revenue that you wanna earn in the type of working environment that you want to earn it in. Most people would say, I don't know. And if they did, their answers may be still vague to the point where you're like, you're st you still don't know. So I'll say this again. What have you learned from your top five or the top five business builders? Or what have you learned from the uh, business cultures that you want to earn the kind of revenue that you want to earn in the type of working environments that you want to earn it in. If you can't answer those questions, then you probably can't get those results or if those results are probably here and you just don't know they're here. It's like a blessing that you can't see. Doesn't mean that the blessing is not there. You just can't see it. If that makes sense. So building with winning teams or creating winning environments. You want to win in the environment, right? Y'all on the screen, y'all want to, want to uh, win in the environment? Okay. I'm on live and I, on IG and it's probably it's super early in the morning um, on the Eastern Standard Time, so it's all good. Okay. Everybody wants to build a winning team. Everybody wants to uh, create winning environments. So here's a general template. Number one, and this is one that I pre this is one that I co-created. Uh, so it's five. So number one, practice outputting your people, your people's appreciation language. You heard of love language? You heard of, you heard of the book uh, the love languages? <laughs> well, in business, people have appreciation languages. Wow, I, I feel like you appreciate me. In business, in business, or in projects, y'all need that. I'm telling y'all. That, oh, wow. I feel like you really appreciate my work. That goes a long way in getting projects done. So, um, practice outputting your people's appreciation language. Appreciation should be given off how they like it, not how you like giving it off. I'm gonna say that again. Appreciation should be given off how they like it, 
not how you like giving it. Okay. Create a sense of belonging. Make your community or whatever group you're trying to build, make your community uh, special. Let them know which section that they're on on your Voltron outsourcing path. <laughs> Jason, what are you talking about now? Your Voltron outsourcing path. What in the world does that mean? This will make sense uh, moving forward. I'm not telling right now. Number three, create personal and professional development programs for path mates so that the group you encounter or the groups you encounter could possibly grow from their gifts and talents during projects with you. Man, I got better with you because think about it. Everybody likes to talk about, oh, I got worse with you. Um, this happened, this happened. Um, what if majority of the people who've interacted with you, they say, I've gotten better with you. Uh, I left you on the highest note of my life or you're always around at the highest point of my life, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Number four, celebration of successes. Celebrate micro, micro and macro achievements. Man, we out here working. You talking about celebrating. I'm going to say it again. Celebration of successes. Man, we out here working. Here, watch out. Y'all get out. Don't come back. I'm not talking to y'all. Everybody else that wants to grow a team, celebrate your successes. Celebrate micro and macro achievements. This creates team energy and momentum needed to move forward on future projects. And again, this is just the beginning. This is going to make sense here in a little bit. Lastly, number five, <clears throat> make sure every team member's purpose matches with the overall goal of the team or group project. According to 50 Cent, aka Curtis Jackson, he said passion makes perfect. That was super deep. So most people say, what do you, did you mean he, he said practice makes perfect? Nope. Curtis Jackson aka 50 cent said passion makes perfect if you have a passion for doing something you're just going to just do it you're just going to do it and 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 you're going to see the imperfections of other people who don't do it like you you know you ain't perfect but you can see all the imperfections of everybody else if you just pop locked for the rest of your life like michael jackson used to always People that don't put that type of work in, you gonna look and see the imperfections of their pop locking, right? So, if you have a passion for something, you gonna do it so much. So the only people you gonna respect is other passion. Like, ooh, they got a passion for that too. Mmm, he looks like he pop locked <laughs> for 19 hours like I do. I'm a 19 hour pop locker. Hey. Whatever your passion is, other passionate people are going to really see what, what, what you got going on um, versus other people who, who cares? This should be um, an analyzation of passion versus what's coming to you. Because sometimes what's coming to you is not always good. Because again, it's, I want to attract. You can attract some whack stuff too, though. So it's not all about what you attract. So what you it's, it's what you manifest, what you make, is what you co-create. Attraction is cool. Co-creation is the work involved in manifestation. So project goal obtainment is easier with the right teammates. So again, everybody has a project. Everybody has a goal. Not everybody is obtaining their goal. So project goal attainment is easier with the right teammates. I'm going to use a nature reference. Because you should always reference things, right? Or cross-reference or use analogies or use other type of information to make sense of what you're, the point you're trying to get, get across. So I just said project goal attainment. <gasps> oh, we got a project. Oh, we have a goal. Oh, we want to obtain it. 
is easier with the right teammates. So look at this like a coach. Here's a nature reference. What is AV formation? So the letter A, the letter V. What is AV formation? It is when the air of the leader birds, the air, when the air of the leader birds that has traveled over the wings. So birds flop and there's air above and below air the, their wings. So when they push up and push down, um, pushes down on the still air below. So in turn, the air behind the bird pushes up, creating a swirling vortex. So think about being in the middle of a swirling vortex of air flowing behind and to the side of the bird. So the air moving up helps create a lift for the next bird in the V formation. So like a V-shaped boomerang canoe that does it spin. Cause you know, boomerangs, when you throw it, they spin. Imagine just a boomerang going straight but imagine you it's like you're sitting on it like a canoe and all you got to do is flap like a canoe on water made but this canoe um and boomerang is made of air energy and force as long as everyone keeps rowing flapping and working so jason this is for all the people that was like oh i can correlate that and i can connect that and i get what he's saying and um some people might be like, oh my God, I just get shoot it to me straight. I train my grown thinking self to only see it one way. So I refuse to budge. Whatever. Hopefully this helps you then. Another way of seeing this or a translation is when you're headed in the right direction with the right group or team and everybody knows their job from the top leaders to the top back followers will make it easier for all project members to win the many group and individual championships of success that comes with reaching destination and goals. I'm gonna say that again. When everybody knows their jobs from the top leaders to the top uh, followers, to the top two followers, because we're still talking about that V formation AV formation, it will make it easier for all project members, everybody that's a part of that formation, to win. The many, not some, not one, the many, 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 many group. What about me? And individual championships of success that come from what? Me looking good? Nope. Championships of success that come from me getting all the shine? Nope, 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 nope. Championships of success that come from reaching destination and goals. Some people still might be like, Jason, I don't get it. I'm going to give you a musical reference. It's like making it big with the group band. You are making it big with the group band. Whatever you call making it big is making it big you're making it big with the group band whatever instrument you play whatever your position in the band is you are making it big with the group band and you're making it big with your solo career too if you don't get that then i'm sorry Outsourcing paths is the new teams. Jason, what are you talking about now? Because at first I thought you were talking about how you we, we going to attract and manifest, co-create new groups. I'm telling you right here. Outsourcing paths is the new teams. <sighs> Remember, everybody's independent right now. Independent. My page, my this, my that, my that, I, I. My views, my followers. 
Outsourcing paths is the new teams. What is your custom outsourcing paths look like? Watch this. <laughs> this is good right here. You can be so rich that you don't have to move and still live. You can be so rich that you don't have to move and still live. You can be so rich that you can pay other people to actually move you. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of outsourcing. It's time to create payment. You know, like breadcrumbs? <laughs> It's time to create payment paths towards the teamwork needed to finalize your services, businesses, and or projects. Hmm, Jason, I get that. Little breadcrumbs and you start with your first breadcrumb and that's the beginning of your business and you keep going until you get to, we won't say the end of your business, we'll just say the goal, whatever project goal. Because everybody wants to start something and everybody has a goal, but not everybody gets there. So what you're saying is, since everybody don't help each other, you're saying create an outsourcing team, which signifies the breadcrumbs that get you to your project goals and yay, you're happy. Yep, yep, that's what I'm talking about. I said this a long time ago. If you had the right people working for you, you really need about seven people doing about seven things for you to reach any goal. Like literally, I want to do this, I want to do this, and I want to take over this. And I want... Imagine having seven people successfully doing seven things for you. You probably will reach that goal. You probably don't even need the whole seven. You probably don't even need the whole seven people, and you probably don't need the whole seven people doing seven things. But at the beginning, if you had seven people doing seven things, you're probably going to reach that goal. It's so hard to find people and it's so hard to... Oh, Norm. Yell at them. Remember in chairs when Norm used to come in? Don't ask me how I know that. But Norm. When people talk like that, you be like, oh, Norm. Oh, Norm. Oh, normal. If you have a goal from A to Z... You can hire your way to it. Good night, New York. Like, it's that easy. Nah, 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 nah. It's a gift to be able to hire people and bring people in and manage adults. And don't let them have a big social media because everybody knows who I am. But tell them to do a GoFundMe and then see how famous they are. GoFundMe's are some of the most humbling <laughs> experiences for some people now again the people that really need it definitely not talking about you but again the people who feel famous and be like man let me do a go for me okay jason you trying to be funny i'll do a go for me because i get i get thousands of likes in a minute and then boom they do a go for me and then they get eight dollars then you see it's like dang it's been two days and eight dollars this is what I'm saying. We live in a day and age where you can be so rich that you don't have to move and still live. You could be so rich that you can pay other people to actually move you. Welcome to the wonderful world of outsourcing. It's time to create payment paths towards the teamwork needed to finalize your services, businesses, and or projects. What is an outsourcing path, you may ask? Here we go. Jason, this sounds like some deep stuff. You always trying to go deep. <laughs> okay, let me show you how deep I'm going to go right now. Here we go. Let, let, watch how deep I go. <clears throat> how to outsource a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without ever touching it <laughs> and having it fed to you and you can be brought back to life if you need medical attention.
Jason, what are you talking about? Even though I do get that, that was actually easy to understand. Uh, but say that again, even though that was very easy to understand. Okay, I'm going to say this again. <clears throat> you can sit still. Don't move. Just sit like this. Just use your fingers. You can outsource a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Coming to you without ever touching it. Having, and you can have it fed to you. And you could be brought back to life if you need medical attention. <sighs> Jason, explain a little bit more. I know you just need a little bit more. Here we go. A little bit more. Here we go. Here goes the outsourcing versus trying to be friends with all these people. You can pay a personal shopper or a personal assistant to directly buy the groceries, buy the groceries from the grocery store. Or order the groceries online. Congratulations. You just outsourced that responsibility, that check off to a peanut butter and jelly sandwiches coming to your mouth without you even touching it or whatever. Number two, you can pay a personal shopper or personal assistant to put your groceries away. You don't even have to put the you don't even have to put your own in this day and age, you don't even have to put your own groceries away in your house. Okay, Jason, I'm getting it. So you just sitting there and groceries is coming to your house and being put away. I still don't have no peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now you outsource to a chef or some type of person who will cook for you. But again, if you pay them right that chef boy RD will come through if you pay if you're paying right so pay a chef to come over and prepare your peanut butter and jelly sandwich ain't no chef gonna take a job pay a chef to that I'm being sarcastic but again just go with the flow eat the meat spit out the bones I'm being sarcastic but just pay attention ain't no chef gonna take no uh, hey chef I just cash out you two thousand dollars to come over here and make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich I'm doing this little um I'm doing this little test. I'm doing this little outsourcing test and stuff like that. So um, literally, I got a big budget. So boom, I cash at you. Could you come over on Thursday and make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Ain't no chef in their right mind. We'll be like, no, I'm a chef. I only make. They be like, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be right over. <laughs> Last but not least, number four. Pay a current or retired nurse. To feed the peanut butter and jelly sandwich to you. Well, Jason, what was you talking about medical attention? Oh, I forgot. Say you're so lazy that you don't even want to chew your food and you choke on it. The nurse can do the homily maneuver and bring you back to life during your meal. During your meal. <laughs> so, you never had to move. You never had to move to get that peanut butter and jelly sandwich to your mouth. And you didn't really have to move if you choked on it. Because you outsourced the right way to get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich made for you. So what if you understood project management and time management and overall management and, and management of people and planning? Outsourcing wouldn't be much of a problem then, right? Okay, Jason. You get me with this outsourcing. I get it. I get it. Give me more. I want to get it more. But I get it. Give me more, but I want to get it more. I get that. Here we go. Teamwork is not what it used to be. Today, uh, the way we work in teams are much different. So instead of us all hanging out and working together as a team, all in the same room, um, can be a very rare occurrence nowadays. And remember, remember, I'm about to throw that B word out here. Everybody's busy. Jason, you, did you say everybody's productive? No, no, no. I said everybody's busy. That's different. Everybody's busy. Oh, you talking about productive, productive and busy are two different um, actions. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Um, 
Okay, I get it, Jason. I get it. Um, outsourcing. Give me like an analogy to make sense of how I can go into outsourcing. And I say, oh, no problem. Well, just say hypothetically you own the NBA team. Are you going to play for them or are you going to probably uh, draft players or trade for players that will help you win championships? I'm going to ask you this one more time. There, there, there's beast out here that's jumping for free throw line against your projects being manifested. And you're the team owner. Are you going to walk your old legs down those steps and try to hoop? Are you going to hire Michael Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron James, or... No, I was going to say so funny, but no. I was going to say another player, but no, I'm going to be real on this one. Would you hire somebody else to play or would you play? So, when outsourcing, you're literally like an NBA or NFL sports team drafting players or trading for players that's going to help you win championships. Jason, what do you mean by championships? Oh. Successfully starting and finishing desired business projects. That was easy. Say that one more time. A championship it, uh, translation. Successfully starting and finishing desired business projects. Okay, so in the old norm... Again, teams being around each other all the time could breed too much familiarity, right? I'm familiar with you. I see you all the time. I'm looking at all your flaws. I see you. I am familiar with you all the time. My respect for you is going to drop because I am familiar with you. So people can turn on you, right? So, true, you're, 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 your new friends or your your new norm friends or your outsourcing friends. That's what I like to call them, your outsourcing friends. It's my new family. My outsourcing family. That's my people. <laughs> my outsourcing people. Because you love your children, right? You love your baby. You love your baby. You love your children. But what do they call your business? They call your business your baby. And only your friends should be helping you take care and babysit your baby. So your baby is your business or your baby is your business project or your idea or whatever you want to, whatever you're birthing, because you birth babies, whatever ideal you're birthing that came from a seed. Your friends should be taking care of that baby. Shouldn't be strangers. So you're outsourcing friends should care more about their brands, business, and legacies than they do with creating new possible business enemies. So I'm going to say this again. The people you grew up with or the people that feel like they're familiar with you, they'll turn on you like this. Because again, I'm familiar with you. I, I, I know how you'll react. I'm familiar with you. I feel comfortable. Even though we all evolve or something like that, I guess we're... I know how you're going to evolve. I know whatever. So, um, your outsourcing friends, the people you outsource best with, because again, you'll build a real friendship with them. Success, or championships, <laughs> or successfully uh, starting and finishing desired business projects or ideals. You're going to build some type of camaraderie there. It's just a fact. So again, I'm calling them outsourcing friends. And these, if you pick them right, now again, this is not no, hey, outsource, good night, talk to y'all later. No, 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 no. If you outsource right, these friends will care more about their brands, their business, their legacies, than making you uh, one of their business enemies.
So your crew, because everybody wants friends. Some people want the right friends. Everybody wants friends, but some people want the right friends. What you mean? I want the right friends. I want, I want the right friends. You can't tell the wrong friends by to even make room for the new friends. The wrong friends will run the new friends off. So you're not ready. Please. <laughs> Your crew, like the so-called old days or old norms versus your outsourcing crew. Watch this. Well, how do you grow with your outsourcing crew? Your outsourcing crew grows organically with you during particular projects. Now watch this. Well, what's the speed of organic? The speed of your organic growth depends on your lack or increase in personal development. So you say, if I refine myself, then I can speed up organic. Yeah, because refinement makes everything better. Here's two uh, references, two reference definitions of refinement. Refinement is the process of removing impurities or unwanted elements from a substance. Or if you don't like that definition, or the improvement or clarification of something by the making of small changes. Oh, I get it. Um, so if we offer refinement opportunities to my outsourcing friends during our projects, then the improvement or clarification of something by making small changes can happen? Yeah, yeah. And it won't be such a hard change. It won't be such a hard change um, refining yourself with people who perfectly connect or bet. I ain't gonna say perfectly. I'm sorry. Best connect because again, you're taking care of your baby. You you just move different when you take care of your baby. That's physical or business. And I dare somebody try to argue. No, your business is not your. It's not your baby. It's not a form of your baby. Okay. Okay, Jason, I get it. I get it. So let's assemble the team then. Okay, y'all want to assemble the team? You want to assemble your team? Well, Jason, um, you can't speak for everybody. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a general template for everybody to hear it and you take it to work for yourself. Number one, let me see how many there is. There's seven. Number one, I'm gonna call you, you, all of y'all, I'm gonna call you project leaders because it's your project or it's your baby. Why would you have somebody lead it? You know where you want it to go. You just need help getting there. You know where you wanna go, but you're going to bring other people that's going to make different, you know, sense of it, but you know where you want it to go. So I'm going to call you the project leaders. Project leaders must evolve a clear A to Z plan with best intentions for karma and cause and effect purposes. Well, what's an A to Z plan? Well, when you say your ABCs, you say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z, right? So A is the beginning and Z is the ending. Um, you have a beginning of an ideal and you have an ending of an ideal. That sound, remember we were talking about celebrating successes? That's the ending. That's the, oh my God, it worked. Congratulations, you did it, you did it, you helped, you helped, you helped, you helped. Um, man, this feels good. That's Z, <laughs> that's Z, that's the ending. So number one, every project leader must evolve a clear A to Z plan. Yourself, you need to see A to Z. Cause it's going, it's not gonna, nobody's gonna steer you off your path. And I'm not saying be, you know, just like, oh my God, I'm just gonna fight everything. No, listen, eat the meat, spit out the bones though. I'm a vegetarian. Eat the fruits, spit out the stems. 
you know what I mean? Just, just stay in context. So evolve a clear A to Z plan. Number two, project leader, that's you, that's you, that's me, that's all of us, that's taking care of an idea or a baby. Number two, project leaders must establish meeting days, work days, and times. Think about it. You go to work. You have meeting days at work. You have work days. You have times. Your work is getting done at work. So at the end of the day, your work needs to have meeting days, work days, and times associated with it. Treat it like a business. You open from this time to this time. Treat it like a business. What do you mean? Treat building a team like a business? Yes. 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 Number three, project leaders, that's you, organically invite out possible team members via phone call, text, or email to participate in weekly or monthly individual and group working and meeting sessions. I don't need to repeat that. That's the general stuff. Number four, project leaders must repeat until project team is best assembled according to A to Z project plan. That's your project plan, and you have an ending, and you have a beginning. And again, I already know all this stuff. Well, number four, repeat until the project team is assembled. I already got my project team. Okay, let's keep going then. Number five, project leaders must go over individual and group goals, individual and group goals, individually and collectively to spot any changes in the team, good or bad. So you, you're the leader. Go, you must go over individual and group goals. Individually, you have to do it. And collectively, you have to do it. You have to have a group meeting to spot any changes in the team or group. Good or bad changes. You'll see changes, I promise you, if you do that. All the way down to... We got to meet right now. We got to. That don't sound like passion. <sighs> that long? The meeting is going to be that long? Mm, that don't sound like passion. That hurts even saying that. <laughs> as far as my team, I. Um, we got to do how much work? That don't sound like passion either. So. Project leaders must go over individual and group goals individually and collectively to spot any changes in the team, good or bad. Number six, two more. Everyone must work and debrief work weekly or what it, monthly. Why? Why, do, why would we have to debrief our work? This promotes honesty, transparency, and accountability during all project debriefs. It's hard to lie in business. <laughs> so imagine somebody debriefing and being like, I'm, I don't be late, I'm always on time. And it's like, dude, you are late every, you can literally see somebody's sanity during, during a debrief, I promise you. Everybody, please don't wear a white shirt. And I come in like this. And then I debrief and I'm like, I always follow the rules. People literally can be like, oh my God, Jason is out of his mind. He said he always follows the rules. All the way down even to his shirt. He always breaks the rules. Wow. So you don't even have to go off on people. You can literally sit during a, de during a debrief and be like, wow, you're blind. Remember, we was gonna put so and so, we was gonna put them on that one project. Wow, this debrief is saving us so many arguments. Everybody keep debriefing. What do, what do you think about uh, your transparency, your honesty, your accountability during this project? Well, um, I don't do nothing wrong. And, I, and I'm like, oh, man, this debrief is cool. Jason, you still going to call me? No, no, no. I'm not going to call you no more. Why not? Because it's debrief. Now that happened in my head. Now, Jason, you still gonna call me? Yeah, but not about that business project. Because of that debrief. I'm telling y'all, sometimes y'all need to have these meetings just to see where people's minds are at. 
they'll tell you, I promise you, and this narcissistic, individualized, sociopathic, me, 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 me day and age, man, people are just waiting for an interview. Just ask them a question. I'd be like, what? Look, they'd be like, where'd you get that mic from? Well, you asked me a question or not. It's like, but yeah, you carry a mic with you? That's not real life. Because this might be somebody like, oh, I don't carry a mic. No, that's a metaphor for saying people are, always, people are always ready to speak because they feel like everybody's just dying to hear them speak. Number seven. I'm going to say this again. When projects are finalized, celebrate project to release project tensions, which build stronger bonds with existing project members you wish to move forward with and to recruit possible future project members. What do you mean recruit? I thought we throwing a party. How, so, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm confused. You just said... Uh, um, celebrate the project. Now you're talking about recruiting? Yeah, because parties, banquets, and celebrations make it easier for you to invite out new candidates. Oh, we can invite out possible new people. Okay, I get that. Mm -mm. Or you may run into possible candidates by strategically having these celebrations. Watch this. That best, that, that your best candidates actually hang out at or would hang out at. Think about throwing a celebration in a place where your best candidates would probably hang out at or would like to hang out at. <laughs> but don't have celebrations at bars if you're recruiting candidates that don't drink. If that makes sense. Don't have celebrations at bars if you're recruiting candidates that you don't want drinking. Okay. Well, what's the problem? Because you keep talking about, you know, this group stuff. And this is the this is the age of independence. Jason, are you calling this a problem? And I'm saying, yes, this is a problem. Because I call it toxic independence. Because toxic independence is being unrealistically pushed on society to weaken you. Well, to at least weaken your magnet. Cause y'all thought I was going to be political. I'm going back to science. So toxic independence is being unrealistically pushed on society to strengthen you. No, to weaken you. Well, to at least weaken your magnets. Cause we know we attract. So check this out to weaken your magnets to say the least. Remember I was talking about the birds. Um, you see how they don't fly in neater arrows or AV formations. Well, um, the air, remember I was telling you the air that travels over the wings, it pushes down. So them pushing that down and all them doing that, they're creating a vortex that the back birds get the ride in. And um, this creates the lift for the next bird. But they say we are what we eat. So if we eat birds... But we independent and we can't never move forward with nobody. We can't even call you a bird brain anymore. Because even birds know how to travel in teams. But watch this. And this is going to make sense, I promise you. There's two reasons why birds might fly in a V formation. Check this out. I'm telling you, this is, this is, this is bars all up in this. It makes flight easier. So again... I'm not saying this is a peace sign or so, but again, this flying formation, it makes flight easier. Or they're just simply following a leader. Right? They want to go south or they want to go to a, def a destination and they're following a leader. Now check this out. Even from a technological standpoint, let me show you the power of groups and teams. Did you know that squadrons of planes can actually save fuel? Flying in a V formation. <laughs> I just told you birds create a vortex that science proves. And now I'm telling you that technology, squadrons of planes, can save fuel. 
So they're not going, they're not, can save fuel flying in a V formation. And many scientists suspect that migrating birds do the same thing. They save fuel. And think about how tired everybody is. Oh my God, everybody's busy, everybody's tired. I promise you, if you talk to a lot of people, a lot of people are tired, tired. <sighs> but they independent. But group activity, according to science, says it works for birds and it works for technology. But humans are working together. No, no, humans are independent. I didn't say you got to create the Wu-Tang Clan. I just said a V formation helps birds save fuel. The V formation helps technology, squadrons of planes, according to science, save fuel. But everybody else is busy and tired and independent. I get it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, according to James Usher Wood, a locomotor bio, uh, a bio machinist, machinist, I'm sorry, a bio machinist at the Royal Veterinarian College at the University of London in Hattonfield, where this research took place, he said models that treated flapping birds like fixed winged airplanes estimate that the saving energy by drafting off of each other, but currents created by airplanes are far more stable than the os oscillating eddies coming off of the birds. Meaning the air gets pretty darn wiggly behind flapping wings. So this, this vortex created is smoother from technology. The birds actually make it make it the vortex, the floppy, the the the, the wiggly feeling. You know, according to this guy, James Usherwood. So, Jason, what are you saying? Because I know I know you believe in balance. Are you saying too much social distancing is weakening my magnets? So I'm ready to argue with you, Jason. I am ready to argue with you. And I know that's why I'm going to argue back with you with science first. Because I know you are ready to argue. If I give you my opinion. So to answer that question, Jason, are you saying too much social distancing is weakening my magnets? To answer that question from a scientific standpoint, and again, some people might not get this. And again, I'm going to try my best to get you off my page to make room for people who can hear me because all this is is a target audience thing. Anybody that don't get you, they're friends with somebody that's outside of their target audience of understanding information. Why are you friends? You're not friends with them in real life. Why are you friends with them on social media? That's another thing that's depressing y'all. If y'all had to hang out with the people that y'all can't stand, y'all will be depressed. But y'all let these people hang out with y'all on social media and you wonder why you're depressed. Energy transfer. Too much social distancing weakens your magnets. Unused magnets, according to science, typically don't demagnetize, watch this, at a noticeable rate. Unused magnets, so you're not using these magnets, typically, they stay strong. They don't demagnetize at noticeable rates, noticeable rates, but they are demagnetizing. Watch this. But their strength can still deteriorate the strength of a magnet. Think about a weak magnet. So the strength of a magnet can deteriorate over several years. How many years, Jason? Usually five to ten. Oh, shoot. So the strength of a magnet, according to science, can deteriorate over several years. How many years? Five to ten. In storage, now this is the most scientific stuff, but in storage, permanent and rare earth magnets can attract other magnets that weaken their own magnetic fields. 
So you can even attract magnets that weaken your own magnetic fields, but that's a different conversation. But if you want to look in that, um, it's a Nico and ceramic magnets that are more prone to this. So if you want to research that, those are the magnets that um, can attract other magnets that weaken their magnetic field. That's a whole nother conversation. But back to this, back to the initial conversation is unused magnets typically don't demagnetize at noticeable rates. Like we can't see it like, you know, gravity and vibration, but their strength can still deteriorate over several years. And we, we established that five to 10 years. Now watch this. How many people do you know? This is a supreme question. How many people do you know? whose heart has not connected to another person's heart in over five to 10 years, if ever. Which means we usually don't build teams and groups. We usually build them from the logic of mind versus the vibrational magnets of our heart strength. Why are you talking about, Jason, why are you saying heart strength like this? Cause I'm going back to science. This is my science flex. This is not me. I'm flexing for science. Thank you, science. Because according to science, unused magnets typically don't de uh, don't demagnetize at noticeable rates, but their strength can still deteriorate over several years, usually five to ten. So weakening. So I said, our hearts are magnets. So I said, how many people's hearts have not connected to another person's heart? So that's an unused magnet. Jason, I get what you're saying. That is an unused magnet. I get it. Oh, my God. I don't even hug people. Oh, okay, okay. My heart is a magnet, and I'm not using my magnet, and you use science to... <sighs> how many people's hearts has not connected to another person's heart in over five to 10 years, if ever, which means we usually build teams and groups from the logic of mind. That's still good, but we don't add the vibrational magnets of our heart strengths. And if we do, our heart strength has been weakened because we are unused magnets. You are always building and attracting your team. So literally, you're always team building because anybody that you bring in is on your vibrational level. So this is really a setup for you're always team building. You're always team attracting. And I know why a lot of people don't date. Ugh, ain't no man out here. What that person is saying is, ugh, all the men who are on my same vibrational level ain't shit. Excuse my language. But if you are what you attract, no, I'm gonna stop there. That's too much accountability. It's too early in the morning to be taking that much accountability for stuff, for, for magnets. Because again, boom, <laughs> how in the heck did you do this? If you're not just like each other, my goodness. Stop complaining about people that you did this with. Watch this. I don't do this no more. So what do you think people were saying about you when you were doing this? Now that you're not doing this, don't think you're better than everybody. You're, congratulations, you're finally out of that party. You are always building your team or group according to your current magnetism or vibrational levels, because I'm trying to talk to everybody. Magnetism, everybody that I'm supposed to be talking to. Magnetism, because again, Jason, what's the, what do you mean? What is magnetism? Give me science with magnetism. Well, magnetism is the force exerted by magnets. So how do you, they attract? What's well, a force that is exerted by magnets, which when they attract, Oh, okay, it no, 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 no. Remember the law of duality. Or repels each other. So it's a magnet, and we good at that. But sometimes we ain't doing it right. 
So we know that magnets, according to science, is a force exerted by the magnets when they attract or when they repel. Give me some other ways of looking at this, okay? Well, have you ever just known when you instantly like or didn't like a person or an environment? You just literally was like, oh, okay, I don't like it here. Oh, I don't like you. I don't care. You could be professional or whatever, but you just literally know, like, I don't like you. And when we do like a person, it's usually the stuff that we liked in other people that we turned out not that we turned out not liking but we like the beginning of them so all it is is a remake of the beginning of some stuff that didn't pan out right so you're really addicted to the beginning of things with the same people <laughs> we'll talk about that later so again magnetism is caused by the motion of electric charges every substance is made of tiny units called atoms each atom has electrons and particles that carry electric charges. So we're not going to go that deep into that, but at the end of the day, magnetism is a force exerted by magnets. So again, you are constantly attracting or repelling people. You have instincts. That's why a lot of you lost a lot of adults. And again, that's why I like talking to youth. A lot of adults have lost their instincts. You feel what you need to do. You know what you need to do. You just, you've learned new things and you've learned how to not only depend on your God-given instincts from the information given from by men who are borrowing pieces of God's or universal mind, whatever you want to say. And the reason why I say universal mind because some people don't believe in a creator, but at the end of the day, universal mind sounds like some creator stuff. But... To me, a creator calls his mind. So at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to relay a message to the people I need to relay it to. And again, I'm working diligently to get the people who have a problem with leaving places that they don't understand. I'm going to help you. So um, here go five important magnetism outcome questions that I need you to answer later. But I'm going to ask you now, answer them later. What is your magnetism outcomes with baby boomers? What is your magnetism outcomes with Generation Xers? What is your magnetism outcomes with millennials? What is your uh, magnetism outcomes with Generation Zers? What is your magnetism outcomes with Generation Alphas? Here's some small information with um, protecting the minds of your group. So let's just say again, Jason, I hear all this other stuff, but I already got a group. I just need to hear information about to make my groups better. Well, what's your plan to protect their minds? No, literally, do you have a document like this is how we want to protect the minds of my group? No, most people don't have that. So let me tell you why you should have that. Today, the human mind is being stretched to insane levels. How do you and your teams protect your minds? Can you come back home mentally? Jason, what do you mean come back home mentally? Well, if you get lost just out in public and you're a child or whatever, and the first place you may miss is the place you currently call home. Well, what if you lose your mind? Then can you come back home in your mind? Home in your mind is what we call happiness. Think about it. This place, this happiness that we're chasing. <laughs> everybody's chasing happiness. This place that you reach called happiness or fulfillment in your mind, whatever this place is, whatever is the opposite place of, the, of depression, this place that we reach, that we, this ultimate pinnacle, Let's call that place home then. Home in your mind. Can you come back home in your mind? Or do you need things to do it? And guess where your best house is then? Your dream house is. Your dream house should be your best mind.
versus being out of your home, translation out of your mind. What do you look for when you're building a team? This is what you should look for when you're building a team. Hire on and bring on different personalities and gifts to build um, an outsourcing dream team. Everyone should possess the strengths of the weaknesses of their teammates. Everyone should possess the strengths of the weaknesses of their teammates. You need creativity, but everybody's creators. So you need closers. But you don't need all closers. You need people in sales. Or you need sales. You need a sales component. Now you need marketing to sell. And you need personal assistance. That's another thing too. Uh -uh, and I work for myself. If you really look at this, some of the jobs that people do, it's like a lot of a lot of people are personal assistants. They're just not called personal assistants. They're personal assistants. I promise you. Um you need project managers. You need people looking at the overall project. Some people are like, no, I need to do this and do it. You need people looking at the project. You need time managers. You need people looking at the time of project and just staying with time. You need overall management to make it work and to keep it going how you see it. This is your baby. But just because it's your baby, are you going to be the teacher, the principal, uh, the basketball coach, the therapist, the doctor, the medical surgeon? Because, again, some children need, um, they break things and they need cash. You're going to make your child's cash. You're going to do everything. You don't do everything for your child. But in business, isn't it funny? We, 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 I am the brain surgeon of my child. Why don't you, you went to school for brain surgery? No, I, I just do everything for my business. Cool. Outsource. Now, look who responds to the vision. And then look who responds to the money. Those are two different things. I promise you, I don't never interrupt somebody talking about what they, the bag and the bag and money and money and money. Social media allows you to see how people who never had money, how they talked. Versus when they think they got some money, how they talk it. You should talk the same. Because I'm not going to lie, truth is the truth with or without money. So if you spit more of that with money then any clever person could just say, well, that's cool that you're doing it. And again, that's cool, but that, that attitude can be controlled or regulated by inflation or money, the lack of money and power that come with it. So when it comes to the vision of your um, team or your group or whatever you're building as far as it's gonna take multiple people, look who responds to the vision. And then local response to the money. But make sure you're casting the vision. And watch who really and watch who's really locked in. Watch. Watch who's really locked in. So profiling candidates. Always ask them, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Now this allows uh, you to see how they think and how much they're thinking about your project in real time. You'll get to see higher and lower level responses too. So again, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And again, they can't lie. Their response is gonna literally tell you how much they've been thinking about it. And if they told you that they're locked in and they show, and again, if you literally ask them, what do you think about things that they should be thinking about? And they can't really explain what they're thinking about because you got to understand this is a day and age this is a day and age where everybody is verbally moonwalking remember moonwalking was when michael jackson went forward or backwards michael jordan i said michael jordan michael jackson was going backwards i'm seeing people communicate and when they cannot um 
dominate you or get you to where they want to get you, they run and they moonwalk away from you. So you should be happy. They're telling you I never was in it like that. But I don't think you should wait for the moonwalk. You should ask them, what do you think about this? 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 Think about this? And just listen. They'll tell you. And again, if you see any moonwalking, oh, I just been busy and stuff like that. I just no, that was a moonwalk. Oh, the reason why I'm not gonna, I'm gonna change the conversation. And that's a moonwalk. They're moonwalking. <laughs> They're moonwalking. They're not answering your question. They're strategically moonwalking away, and you're like, "Are you in front of me? Are you?" It looks like they're in front of you. But they're literally getting farther and farther away from you because they're moonwalking. So, if you want something done right, or if you want something done in general, do it first. I promise you, are you going to pay dearly? If you want something done, do it first. You can teach it better. I promise you. And that's for everything that you want done. Everything that you want done, do it first. I promise you, you'll relay the message better. Build a team with different strengths and personalities. So again, you need structure. You need structured people. Ah, that's how I don't structure people. That's good. Treat it like a high school or middle school or even elementary school lunch table. Ah, oh, all the structured people uh, sit over there. Well, that's good. In your business or your whatever project that you're doing, all the structured people need to sit over there. All the technical people need to sit over there. All the action people need to sit over there. All the relationship people need to sit over there. What do you mean action and relationship? No, no, no. Action people can ruin relationships. When you need something done, the action people go there. When you need something smoothed out or you need like a, you know interactions to be a long time, don't send the action people. Watch this. I don't have none of those people. So let's just say all these is your personalities. <laughs> you have multiple personalities. You have, you're going to have to turn into your structure self. You're going to have to turn into your technical self. And then you're going to have to turn into your action self. And then you're going to have to turn into your relationship self. That sounds depressing. Outsourcing. I'm going to leave you with this. If you're looking for outsourcing consulting, because again, you have a series of people that you call anyway to get something done. Even if you do it, everything on your own, you're doing it, you're still utilizing some platform, you're, you're, you still have a path to get stuff done. So if you're looking for outsourcing consulting, which again, I'm telling you, attracting the best team, that old norm of we all a team and da da da, that's the new norm is build a team of outsourcers. And, and when you guys connect on getting the projects done of your baby, you will literally be like, oh my God, I can't believe I hung out with other people besides you guys. Um, I, I'm surprised it took this long. I can't believe it took this long. So, you can email me at WCWorld, so it's just uh, uh, letter W and the letter C, so it stands for Winter Circle, WCWorld, and then the number seven, Not don't spell out seven, just the number seven, WCWorld7 at gmail.com, and if you're a compatible client, then let's work, but if not, um, I or we should be able to refer someone who can point you in the right direction. So again, thank y'all for y'all time. Ain't nothing to say but uh, let's work and peace and love. Let me stop that up here. Recording stopped. All right. And uh, everybody take care. Peace and love.